Denise is um, in the kitchen cooking and uh, I'm going to be here narrating a little bit and enjoying watching Denise cook. Like I said, we're going to lighten things up a little bit because um, I don't know about you, but I kind of been feeling like this for the last couple of months or kind of like this for the last couple of months or even like this, you're actually stunned that we're in the situation that we're in. This almost seems unbelievable, like a horror movie, but it's really not. Um, and we're just tired of being shut in. And like I said, you know, throughout all the country now, they're starting to open up slowly, allowing us to go out, you know, to the park, uh, allowing us to um, put plant flowers in our yards and to get out and, and enjoy ourselves within reason. So it's summer and it's time to be free and get out. So let's go. It's picnic time. And so Denise is going to help us um, make the dishes that look like this so we can have nice picnics, whether it's out on our deck or it's at the park or it's on our patio or if it's even at our kitchen table. So let's talk a little bit about uh, summer nutrition. Um, Brent, I'm having a little bit of, can, can we go to, go to gallery view? Say that, what's going on? I'm, you know, maybe I need to go to gallery view because everything is covered up on the screen. I'm seeing everything on the right side. Can you see the, can you see the entire screen? Yeah, and then the gallery is on the right and then your PowerPoint, PowerPoint is uh, in, the, in the big screen. What do you see on your end, Sharon? Do you see the PowerPoint presentation? Uh, with all the faces, all our faces are on it though. Yeah, that's okay. Can you at least see the PowerPoint? Uh, nope. <laughs> oh, well try to go, you can't see the PowerPoint on your screen? Well, no, only portion of, but that's okay, I'm fine. Okay. So what we want to do during this- Writing on the right hand side. Yeah, you can drag it over to the left hand side. Uh, Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank, thank you, guys. I wasn't sure what, uh, what she was trying to get to. Appreciate it. Yeah, we, we got community a effort. I know. We got a lot of people here who show up for us, and we need to give you start giving us um, uh, attendance certificates as well as tip <laughs> IT tip for certificates. Anyway, at this time of year, we could take advantage of nature's variety of fruits and vegetables available locally. Um, I went to Whole Foods today and I saw watermelon and I saw strawberries and I saw raspberries and I saw corn. Um, we can grow our own. We can go to the farmer's market. Every Saturday I go to the rural oak farmer's market and probably this Saturday I go down to the Eastern market. But there are all kinds of farmer markets around where we can get locally grown food. Um, you can explore and experiment. You can make some... Um, uh, sprouts in your kitchen, or you can actually start your own garden. It's time to eat more raw foods and salads, eat lighter, and become uh, more active. Uh, if you don't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen because it is going to get hot, you can use a slow cooker, you can use an instant pot, and therefore you don't have to turn your oven on. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of green things, a lot of orange things, a lot of um, Red things, uh, blue things, uh, cantaloupes are what? Yellow, orange. Uh, th then it's going to be the, the other type of melons that's like uh, lime colored. So there's going to be a lot of different types of fruits and vegetables. Now, one of the things about fruits and vegetables is that they have, I'm going to drag this thing again, they have phytochemicals and antioxidants in them that's, that's not fine in animal food. Now, phytochemicals are compounds that are produced by plants. They are found in fruits, vegetables, grains, beans, and other plants. Some of these phytochemicals are believed, notice they're believed, to protect cells from damage that could lead to cancer. Antioxidants are substances that prevent damage to cells from highly reactive, unstable molecules called free, free radicals. A wide variety of plant foods in our diet to get the full spectrum of phytochemicals available to protect our health is recommended. Now, there are 
they're what they are what's called the clean 15 um, and the and the dirty dozen. And the dirty dozen are a lot of uh, plant foods that contain a lot of um, uh, sprays and chemicals, generally a lot of berries, a lot of um, you know grapes and things like that. So one of the things that you want to do is make sure that you wash your fruits and vegetables carefully. And it's also being recommended because of COVID is that we keep our counters clean and that we disinfect our counters. Now, another thing that you can do is you can get to know your local farmers and build relationships. A number of farmers now are going to an online order. So what you can do is go online during the week, order your fruits and vegetables, pay for them, and then just go to the farmer's market and pick them up. Okay, like I said, you can also do fresh herbs and micro sprouting right in your home. Very easy to do. These uh, sprouts are very nutritious and delicious and very easy to take care of. Okay, now, I'll Denise, you ready to go to the kitchen? Can we go back one screen, please? Sure. Okay, I'm going to be showing you because you're not gonna be able to see the PowerPoint when I'm demoing, but I'm going to show you some fresh herbs and also techniques for sprouting. So now we can go to the next screen. Okay, so Brett, how do I make myself the full screen? Aaron, if you can stop sharing your screen for just, uh, just a moment. Sure. Just stop sharing. Here there we go. go. Perfect, thank you. Yep. All right, Denise, take it away. So I, do I need to hit share screen? Uh, no, no, you're all set. Oh, I'm all set. Okay. I just don't see a lot of myself because I'm in a little box. <laughs> all right. In terms of fresh herbs, I brought in a couple of planters. I don't see I her. Let, let me make sure. Can everybody see her? No. Okay. Give me one second. I see her just fine. <laughs> yeah, she, give me one second here. It's a little hard to hear her. I will talk louder. So uh, from you Gavin, can't speaker view. Yeah, if everybody can switch over to speaker view. In the right hand corner of your screen, you're going to see gallery view or speaker view. If you choose yeah. speaker view. There she is. I can Perfect. See <laughs> OK. I wanted to start out with herbs because I love having fresh herbs this time of year. And this is something that Chef AJ showed me when she was here doing a demo. They're called herb scissors. And you can make beautiful little ribbons when you go to do your recipes. So for example, I've got a basil plant here. So I would just take my basil and of course I'm going to wash it thoroughly. And then I can just simply cut it and then I get these beautiful little ribbons that I can put in all my recipes. So it's really nice having those kind of fresh herbs. So I have oregano and rosemary and dill and also a, um, a Greek oregano. But I just started my herb garden. I plan on at making it much larger. Then I wanted to talk to you about sprouts a little. This is my sprouting tray. Um, I just bought mine on Amazon. It has four different levels. The top four, you put a teaspoon of your sprouting mix in it. Now, this is the sprouting mix I really like because it's kind of snappy. It has alfalfa sprouts. So what you do is you take your bottom tray that has your water in it, and you pour it into the sprouts, and then they drain. And I do that twice a day. Well, in five days, this is going to be filled just like the PowerPoint showed. So fresh herbs and fresh sprouts add to all your summer's cuisine. Okay, now to the food. Um, the first recipe I'm going to share with you is a healthy potato salad. Um, I use the recipe from PBNSG that's called Mayno um, in the recipe for the salad dressing, only I dressed it up a little bit with some mustard and also put some parsley. So when you go to make this potato salad, I call it crunchy, creamy potato salad because I use Yukon Gold 
potatoes, so that's my creamy part, but then I add all kinds of vegetables to it. The three different color peppers. I like having green pepper in it because it gives a little bit of bitterness to it. I also put in radishes and I put in celery and I use red onions because that also will give you more color in your potato salad. So one of the things that I do on a regular basis is I don't put the dressing on the potato salad till I'm going to serve it. Um, when you're using tofu based dressings like this, they have a tendency to separate a little bit. And so what I do is I take my dressing and just before I'm going to serve it, I put it on top of the potato mixture. And so this is where you're going to get your creamy potato salad. And then you'll also have the crunch. But I take this to different picnics all the time. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this presentation is because my husband and I camp. Although I did find out online, it probably should be called glamping because we do not stay in a tent. I've got a full size refrigerator in our fifth wheel and I have an oven and a stove and a microwave. So when I thought about camping, I was very upset by all the people that I saw that were eating very unhealthy foods. So I wanted to give everybody the option of things that you're comfortable seeing at a picnic where we can make them whole plant-based and still be really yummy. So that is the potato salad that um, I make and I bring. And you do have that in your recipe packet. My newest summer recipe, I try to incorporate one recipe per month that we haven't had before. Well, as Sharon was saying, this time of year, we have so many different greens that we can get. I really wanted to maximize the herbs and the greens. So I decided to make my own tabbouleh. Every time I go to a restaurant and have tabbouleh, it's swimming in oil. And it's just not very good. So I came up with my own recipe. And... I didn't want it to get warm. And as you can see, I use cilantro, I use parsley, and also kale. Now in this particular batch, you'll see little hints of purple because I used a decorative kale, a purple kale. So you do something called Chiffonrod, and you take all your greens and you roll them together and then you chop. Chop, chop, chop. It takes probably a half an hour to get everything all chopped up. But you start with the greens. And then what I do is I dice up small cucumbers, red onion. Um, I take great tomatoes and I quarter them. And then I mix it all together. And then I put an oil-free Italian dressing on it. So this is great. It'll keep in your fridge for about five days. It's very refreshing. I have it in the morning. If I want it for a meal, I'll put green, I'll put like cannellini beans in it. Sometimes I'll put tofu squares into it. And that way the tabbouleh can become a whole meal. So the tabbouleh and the potato salad are a way that you can get a really refreshing summer meal and you can maximize the amount of greens that you're getting into your diet. Okay, Sharon, it's your turn, food safety. Can we ask two questions or no? Uh, so at the end, I'm gonna, um, I was just gonna say that in the chat to everybody. If you wanna type your questions in the chat box, I'm gonna do a Q&A at the end with both uh, Sharon and Denise. Um, so if you wanna just type them in there throughout the presentation, we'll do a Q&A at the end. Okay, thank right. And just to make sure everybody can now see her uh, Sharon's PowerPoint, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, good.
Sharon, are you still there? Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. I think I muted myself. Um, I'll start over. What I was saying is that if you notice that Denise took her dishes from the refrigerator and she placed them back in the refrigerator. It is very, very important to practice food safety at all times, but particularly in the summertime because it gets so warm. I have had the experience of becoming very, very nauseated and actually releasing the food, if you know what I mean, um, having a regurgitating because I left some food out and it was too warm. And it's particularly if it has any um, oil in it. So you must be sure to practice food safety with regards to foods at all times and particularly in the summertime. Now with regards to, we're talking about going out, up, out on a picnic, you want to, uh, my slide went away from me. Hold on a second. Yeah, and if you can, can you click the from beginning? Um, perfect. Okay or from current slides, sorry. Okay, there, there we, we go. go. Sorry Perfect. about that. So you wanna make sure to pack and transport your food safely. You wanna organize your cooler contents. So you should transport the foods um, in a cooler. Keep the cooler closed. And once at the picnic site or if uh, wherever you're going, make sure that you once you open it and you take an item out that you close the uh, cooler and keep it closed as much as possible. Um, clean your produce very, very well uh, before, you, you, before you cook them or before you use them and keep cold food cold and hot food hot. And there's some quick tips for picnic site preparation. You still must practice uh, food safety. All of us know a lot about cleansing our environment, our tables, our utensils, and even more so because of COVID. So you may need to take sanitizer with you. Matter of fact, you should take sanitizer with you. Um, you may need to take some bottles of water that you could use just for the purpose of washing your hands. So make sure that you keep everything very, very clean. Take any dirty items and put them in a bag so you can bring them back home and wash them. And always remember the one hour rule. I cannot stress this enough. That means do not consume any perishable foods that have been sitting out more than an hour and particularly over 90 degrees. Better to be safe than sorry, but I wanna reemphasize keeping your foods in the cooler. Okay, thank you. Alicia, you wanna do some um, text mess summer favorites? Okay, Brett, we're back. And Sharon, Sharon, go ahead and stop uh, sharing your screen so Denise can take over the screen. Perfect. Okay. Hi, everybody. Tex Mex. It's just easy. And for plant based people, as you know, it's a safe go to during the summertime or any time of year because it has so many plants in it. So I use some of my favorite recipes for Tex Mex that make it really easy. And in our camper, of course, it's really easy for me to transport stuff, but I will take containers like these and I will label them and you would put them in your cooler if you don't have a fifth wheel and I'll label them so I know what each container has and I freeze some of them and some of them go in the fridge. So for the Tex-Mex, the first recipe I want to share with you is um, make sure that I'm doing it in the correct order, the creamy cheese sauce. Now, one of the things that I've noticed in a lot of the different cheese sauces is many of them have cashews in them. Well, the reason we became plant-based was because my husband has a heart condition. So we are plant perfect. So my, my former business partner and I came up with a cheese sauce recipe that doesn't use any nuts. So this particular cheese sauce recipe you dice up, and I use Yukon Gold potatoes. You use three potatoes, you dice them up, and then you dice up about a half a bag of mini carrots. And then you're going to bring them to a boil and you're going to leave them in their water. Then you're going to take your blender, you're going to put in garlic, you're going to put in mustard, you're going to put in some turmeric, 
some salt, and if you have salt restrictions, just vary the amount of salt in it. And then the magical ingredient, nutritional yeast. And so I love nutritional yeast. The only um, preemptive fact I would have on that is if you suffer from gout, you don't want to be eating the cheese sauce with the nutritional yeast, but all the rest of us can. So that is the cheese sauce, and it blends. It stays very well in the um, refrigerator for at least a week. It gets a little bit gelatinous. So you might have to reheat it and add some water or some plant milk if you like. Then I like making um, Chuck Underwood's amazing cauliflower taco meat. Now this, this meat looks just this taco meat, which is all plant-based looks just like what you would put in terms of a ground hamburger in a taco shell. And this is so easy to make. Um, Costco has rice cauliflower and I buy it in a big five pound bag and I use a couple of those bags. Then uh, I use my food processor and I take portobello mushrooms and I put two cups full of that and then walnuts, which is plant strong. So when I'm doing it just for my husband, We'll just use the mushrooms and the cauliflower and we'll not, we'll forego the walnuts. But if your plant's strong and pretty healthy, then you can also do some walnuts. Now you can follow the recipe exactly with all the separate spices, but this is a spice that I get, a taco spice that I put in. And then you just lay it out on either parchment paper or a silicone mat in a, a 350 degree oven. And you just turn it over until it gets nice and brown. For Spanish rice, all you need to do is take rice that you have, cooked rice, and I just add salsa to it. And I call that my Spanish rice. It makes it really easy. Um, and then we also have a Mexican bean salad. So what I do is I take leftovers from my refrigerator. And in this particular salad, I have black beans. I have an organic corn. I diced up some red onion. I put some cilantro in it. And then I have some celery and cucumber in it. Just a nice, crunchy, refreshing salad that goes along with the Tex-Mex theme that um, you would have for this particular meal. So that is the Tex-Mex meal. Now, one of the things that you can do is I found this brand of Rosarita. It has no fat in it. And this is a lime refried bean, or you can make your own. These are my magical tostada shells. They have no added oil. They're baked. Uh, they used to have them at Meyer. Now they're only at Kroger. But what I do is I put the, the refried beans, and then I'll put some of my Spanish rice, and then I'll put my cheese sauce, the cauliflower taco meat, and then I make like a fajita mix with all these beautiful peppers that we're getting now because it's summertime. And then you have a gorgeous tostada that you can eat like a pizza. So it's very yummy. So that concludes the Tex-Mex. Now I want to start talking about grilling. <laughs> Ironically, my husband and I don't have a grill, but we're getting one because I ordered it today. And he said, what do we need a grill for? We don't eat meat grill asparagus, you can grill hamburgers, you can grill carrot hot dogs, you can grill cauliflower steaks. And what you, as you all know, that grilling gives you such wonderful flavor. But in the grilling world that most people live in, they use oil on everything and you absolutely do not have to. So when you are grilling, Flavorful marinades are absolutely crucial to you having a successful grilling adventure. In almost all of my marinades, I'm going to be either using a balsamic vinegar, something with an acid, um, soy aminos. If you're watching your sodium, you can use coconut aminos instead. And then you're going to flavor it depending upon what it is that you are making. Like when I flavor my tofu, I use coconut aminos. I use maple syrup, onion powder, garlic powder, and some liquid smoke in it. And then I flavor my tofu that way. 
you can also do that with the different vegetables and things that you are growing. So the first recipe I'm going to share with you, how many of you have heard of the Impossible Burger? Oh, I see some hands. <laughs> the Impossible Burger is impossibly fattening. It has more fat grams than the original Whopper. So I wanted to come up with a variance because I knew that the Impossible Burger used, it, used something called plant heme. And so through my searches, I came up with a recipe for the Impossible Burger. Now, the Impossible Burger is a little bit different than your black bean and sweet potato kind of burgers that you have. Um, the first thing that you do is you process portobello mushrooms, 12 ounces of them, then you're going to healthy saute. And I know Vicki and Michelle covered healthy saute. You're basically going to get your pan hot enough that the water can dance on it, put your onions in it, and make sure they don't stick. And if they start to stick, just keep moving them around and add more water, or you can use vegetable broth. So the first thing I do is I slice up 12 ounces of mushrooms. I, I like mini portobellas. And then I put them in a saute pan, saute them up. And then I put those in a big bowl. Then I take a cup of cooked quinoa. I like the tricolored, and then I add that to that. And then I use something called TVP. Some of you may be familiar with it. TVP is textured vegetable protein. And it's made out of soy. And I put that in there also, and I hydrate it with some water. And then I also use oil-free breadcrumbs um, because you want to make sure that whenever you're making burgers or meatloaf or anything, that you have something that is going to hold it together. And if it's too wet, when you go to eat a burger, it'll fall apart. But the magical ingredient is grated beets. That's where you get the plant heat. So I wanted to show you, this looks just like raw hamburger. And... It has the color from the plant heme that you get from the beets. And it has a much different flavor than what a black bean burger does. So then you just add the rest of the ingredients to that. Salt, you're going to have some black pepper, a tablespoon of nutritional yeast and garlic, and then you're going to process it till it looks like a meal. If your hamburgers are not holding, them, holding together well, add some more breadcrumbs. Make your patties, put it in a... 400 degree oven. I use Silpat, which is a silicone mat. I let them cook um, 15 minutes the first side, five the second, and then I have wonderful Impossible Burger. So this is the Impossible Burger. And as you can see, it, it holds mm -hmm. together really well. Um, it looks just like a hamburger patty, and it is very yummy. But if you're used to eating black bean burgers, it's always good to know that you're eating something different because the ingredients are so different. The second kind of burger that I make is a black bean sweet potato burger. And this is probably more like what you're used to seeing. And the magical ingredient in that is I also use quinoa in that, but I use sweet potatoes. So sweet potatoes and black beans and then you just put in all your spices. I just wanted to throw that in there because if you want to keep eating your black bean burgers, those are very healthy also. So then savory carrot hot dogs. How many of you have tried a carrot hot dog? Hands up, carrot hot dogs? Okay. <laughs> Carrot hot dogs take a while to get done because they have to be marinated. And as you know, marination is an important part of any kind of culinary experiment that you're doing. Quite frankly, meat tastes awful if you don't marinate it or season it. So what we're doing is marinating and seasoning the carrot hot dogs. Now the trick to carrot hot dog, and I'm going to use my hands here. If I were in a cooking class, at not at home, I would have gloves on. But I try to pick carrots, and the guy at Myers thinks I'm nut, nuts because <laughs> I look for bigger carrots. Because you want them thick enough that they're the size of what a hot dog is going to be. 
And then what you do is you peel them and then the ends kind of use your peeler and round them off so they look like a hot dog. Because the goal is if you go to a picnic and they're having a cookout, you can eat your carrot hot dogs and nobody will know the difference. So you're going to be eating a yummy carrot hot dog, but at the same time, you are not killing your health with the standard American diet. So there, this is the healthiest hot dog bun I've been able to find, and that's Aunt Millie's. Um, to say that there are healthy hot, hot dog buns, I think I would have to make my own. But you just simply treat it just like a regular hot dog. Now look at how that fits in that bun. Mm -hmm. And then you just put all your regular condiments on it. Barack Obama would say, don't put ketchup on it. Nobody eats ketchup <laughs> on it. I eat ketchup on a hot dog. So you can put ketchup, mustard, onions. I even made some Mexicana chili. And as you can see, I have this labeled also. You can make it into a chili dog. You can use relish. Anything that you would use on a regular hot dog, you can use on a carrot hot dog. I thought they were kind of questionable. It took me a while to try them, but then I was really glad I did because they're very yummy. My brother-in-law is not plant-based, but he ate one of the carrot hot dogs, and he said that he knew how hot dogs were made, and he was never going to eat anything but carrot hot dogs from now on. So they must be pretty darn good. The last thing I'm going to show you to grill is a shish kebab. Okay? Yeah. This is how I convinced my husband we needed a girl. <laughs> um, I like using these metal, metal skewers that I have simply because they go through the potatoes a whole lot easier. And I've tried using the wooden ones and I broke them when I was trying to do corn on the cob or the potatoes. This is a recipe from Chuck Underwood. He marinates with a balsamic vinegar dressing and he suggests that I keep the, the marinade separate after I soaked all the vegetables. So you cut up all your veggies, put them in a, a container that has a lid, put the marinade on them and put them in your refrigerator and let the flavors get into all of them. Then you take each vegetable from the bowl. You're gonna put it on the skewer. So on this particular one, I've got a piece of flavored tofu, tomato. I have three different kinds of peppers. I have squash, pineapple, onions, and another potato. So whatever you like is what you should put on a shish kebab. If there's something that you don't like in that list, just eliminate that. If there's, you have an idea to add something different, do that. So you put them on the grill, or you would put them in a hot oven if you don't have a grill at your disposal. And you're going to cook them till the potatoes are soft. And once the potatoes are soft, you're all set. So. Okay. So that does it for the grilling, but I'm going to add one more recipe. And this is called pulled jackfruit. If you've ever eaten pulled pork, jackfruit is a Southeast Asian melon and it mimics pork. Now, I didn't want to do this yet because I wanted to show you. Denise, are we all allowed to come over to your house since you have right. all this food now? <laughs> My husband is like, who's gonna eat all this food? <laughs> It's a shame for COVID, you know? I know. <laughs> You'd be having a party at your house. This is the easiest recipe. You take a crock pot, you put an, a sweet onion, you put celery, green pepper, and your favorite barbecue sauce, and then you open a can of this magical young jackfruit in green brine. Now, I kind of have a source set up in the Grand Rapids area, but I understand they have it over here. They just pay more than I do. So this is what a piece of jackfruit looks like. It's like a triangular shape. Oh, I made it too hot. And so I've got these triangular shapes. Before I bring this somewhere, because I brought it to a, a potluck, and I was going to put 
vegan jackfruit. It's called jackfruit, right? My husband says, no, don't tell them. So I didn't. They ate the whole four quart crock pot. And then his uncle got mad because I, he ate vegan food and nobody told him. <laughs> so, which I thought was dumb. So this is the jackfruit. As you can see, it's kind of like in a square. Mm -hmm. So before you go to your event, you put all this in the crock pot and then I let it cook for anywhere from six to eight hours. Very hands off. If you're going to a picnic the night before, just put it in the crock pot. Then you take forks and it's nice and tender and you just kind of mash it and it's gonna take on the consistency of a pulled pork, as you can see. Mm -hmm. See, pulled pork. So jackfruit, you can eat it on brown rice. It's just, it, it stays in your fridge a lot because it has the acid from the barbecue sauce in it. So it stays a long time in your fridge or freezer. And you can put it on a bun or you can put it on brown rice. And it's a, a, an amazing meal. Okay. Sharon, I think it's your turn. Okay. Yeah, we're not there yet. Sorry. Go down to hydration. Okay, can everybody see it? We can. It's still on the Tex uh, Mex summer favorites, though. Okay. I mean, that was a fabulous job. But I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm pretty hungry. I uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I've had the good fortune of being able to eat Denise's food, so. Uh, it's really fabulous. Oh, I want to make one comment, be, you know, before we go on as it relates to grilling. You know, when you grill meat, it gives them a carcinogenic effect, but that does not happen with uh, vegetables. Um, in addition to that, she made mention of the fact that she uses nutritional yeast to, to make cheese. Nutritional yeast is high in, um, you know, B12, but she said, do be careful if you if you if you have gouts. Okay, now we're headed to hydration. Okay, it's very, very important to um, keep hydrated, particularly in the summertime. It's hotter. Uh, we're sweating more. Um, dehydration can cause, you know, a, you know, a lot of problems. And you want to try to do it without um, consuming a lot of sugary drink, drinks. So as shown in the picture there, you see you can put all types of fruits and all types of vegetables in your water to give it a wonderful flavor. Because we want to be mindful of the fact that our body needs water to deal with the heat. To function properly, all the cells and organs of the body need water. I mean, sometimes you might even be feeling a little cloudy or confused. And sometimes it's a matter of you need to drink some water because you become dehydrated. Now, what is recommended is that at a minimum, you drink a half of your body weight in ounces every day. However, if you're exercising and if you're out in the heat, you need to drink more water. Now, you don't want to wait until you get thirsty because by the time you get thirsty, that means that you are dehydrated. So you should drink a minimum of a half of your weight in ounces um, on a daily basis. Because drinking water helps replenish the fluids from um, sweating. Um, it cools the body down. And also remember that the body needs water in order to function properly on a routine basis. We headed for some desserts now, Denise? We certainly are. All right. Smoothies. So, and Sharon, I just need you to stop sharing your screen. Perfect. Thank you. Denise is like a magician. Look how she changed the, the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is my smoothie book. Anybody that wants to use smoothies, this book has every imaginable smoothie you could possibly want. 
anything from improving your health to losing weight to just refreshing. They're not all plant perfect, but um, some of them are plant strong, but you can pick and choose, which I always do with smoothies anyway, because I want to make sure that I like the end product or I've wasted a lot of expensive ingredients. So I didn't give you any specific smoothie recipes because the way I do smoothies is whatever I have in my fridge. So it's always best if you have a high powered blender. Um, the quality of your smoothies would be much better. Like if you go to Tropical Sun Smoothie, they use high powered blenders there. You just get a much better consistency and it, get, it does more thickening and the smoothies just turn out a whole lot better. Denise, can we get the name and author of that book? Yes, you can. Okay. The Best Green Smoothies on the Planet is okay. the name of it. And it's by Tracy Russell. Okay. So the best green smoothies on the planet. And it is backwards because I'm on camera. <laughs> so Sharon and I talked about whether or not I would actually make a smoothie. I got a blend tech rather than a Vitamix. And it works really well, but when it runs, it sounds like you are blending a screw. So we decided not to do that. But what I did do was I cut up a whole lot of fruit, as you can see, and you can pick and choose. The rule of thumb, according to Tracy, is in order to get your greens and not have them taste like kale in your smoothie, you want to do a 40-60. So 60% 60 of your fruit or whatever you're making with your smoothie and then 40% for your greens. And then you can use almond milk. Um, she doesn't advocate using juices because they usually aren't as healthy as what you get from the real fruit. If you need to sweeten them up, there's nothing better than a medjool date or you can use figs. And the medjool dates are a bigger date and they're softer too so you don't have so much ruckus when you make your smoothies. So I would also use this blender, but because if I'm making ice cream, banana ice cream, I like this attachment because I just make enough for my husband and I. And this has something that scrapes the sides as you blend it. So um, the chocolate, blueberry, um, banana ice cream, I put my milk in first. Then I put the frozen bananas, and when you do the bananas, take the peelings off, slice them, and put them in your fridge. Then I add the blueberries and two to three, uh, two tablespoons of chocolate, and then you just blend it, and then you have a wonderful ice cream. Now, the ice cream does not keep well. It gets really hard, but if you wanted, you could put it into a popsicle if you had something left over, and I'm going to share those with you. One of the things about kids is kids love making ice cream and they love making smoothies and then they can be a part of their health. You can even make vegetables fun for kids. I made this train car out of a green pepper. And if you were having a kid's party or something, you could have a red pepper and a yellow pepper and an orange pepper and all different kinds of things. And the kids get excited about it. It's kind of like when we had the ant on the log and celery, where you'd put peanut butter in it and then raisins. So it's a good way to get kids invested in plant-based. These are my wonderful popsicle makers. Um, I've tried using Dixie cups. I like these better. I think they're neater. And I made some popsicles. If you were here with me, I would share them. <laughs> but I just took the kind of fruits that I had I mash up, I mash some of them up. Some of them I'll put in holes so you can see the actual, like this one has a kiwi on the side and blueberries, mm. okay? Mm. Um, Stephanie told me the best way to make a wonderful popsicle is you just take pineapple and just blend that. And she is right, there is nothing more refreshing. And then I took strawberries and bananas. And then I also tried one with um, cranberries and bananas. So the kids love these. I let them make them themselves. They decide what they want to put in them. You let them freeze for at least four hours. 
and you're all set. So, Sharon, you ready to do a recap? Yes. That's amazing. Thanks, Denise. Uh, let me go from the beginning again. You're going to go to the second from the last slide. Yeah. There you go. There we go. So, you know, you know, I think first and foremost, before we even do a recap, we need to give Denise a hand. I mean, she did an absolute fabulous job. Um, See, this is why uh, I have Sharon teach with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all the wonderful dishes that you can make that are plant-based. I mean, I was just amazed by the popsicle that was made out of uh, the pineapple and then it had the kiwi and the blueberry in it. It actually it looks very beautiful. So, you know, during summer, once again, we want to, you could take advantage of nature's variety of fruits and vegetables. You, Denise gave you an excellent demonstration of how you can utilize all of these, these wonderful fruits and vegetables, make them, um, they're delicious, um, make that beautiful, you can have fun with them, um, you can then have children join in, you can fool people with pulled fruit, <laughs> uh, you could grow your own. As you, 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 you notice, you see how easy it was to actually um, be able to, to uh, make some sprouts at home. And you can explore and experiment um, Denise made comments a couple of times about, well, she didn't like a certain recipe, so she changed it. So in the summertime, we have all these beautiful options. We can grill, we can um, eat raw, we can cook on our stove, but it's a good time to eat lighter and to uh, be more active. If you are doing some cooking and you're concerned about your kitchen getting really hot, you can use a, a Instapot. Seem like this thing is going backwards. I'm just so sorry for this. I think we're ready <laughs> to answer questions now. Yeah. Sharon, if you wanna, do you wanna still do the recap? If not, you can just stop sharing and then I'll just keep Denise's video up and we'll do some Q&A. Okay, I just wanna do something, you know, real quick because- okay, no worries. Yeah. Just give me a second. Yeah, and if you click on the slide that you want to go to on the left and then at the top, click from current slide. Can, can you see the, stop, the slide? Yes. Okay. And the, the, the primary goal of all this is that we, we want everybody to stay safe, but also you want, to, you want to be strong. We didn't spend a whole lot of time talking about these foods build your immune system and keep you strong but they do. So we want you to stay happy, we want you to stay safe, and we want you to stay strong.